So I joined Facebook back in 2005, and I was their first female engineer. We worked on many projects, but the first significant project that I worked on was Newsfeed. When we launched Newsfeed, we were rather surprised by the user reaction. Many users threatened to riot, and we had, for the first time, reporters lined up outside the office. Um, we were really scared. We were locked up in the office. And one of the most interesting things about Newsfeed is that even though 10% of our users threatened to boycott the product, we continued with the vision. We found a way to convince our user base that it was actually a great product. And the other thing that we noticed is that even though people were um, opposing it, fighting against it, feeling violated, um, they actually used Facebook 2x more than they were using it prior to Newsfeed. So after Newsfeed, um, I focused on the Facebook platform and Facebook Connect that helped build the app ecosystem around Facebook. Worked on Facebook privacy and user engagement for a bit. And then I left in 2010. In 2011, I started my own company called Cove. Um, at Cove, we were focused on collaboration and coordination software for private groups and private communities, especially ones that were large, like conferences, um, schools, entrepreneurial groups, etc. And we sold Cove to Dropbox in 2012. And at Dropbox, um, I managed operations. I was a VP of operations. I did everything from recruiting to marketing, communications, um, product, and managing the product teams um, to launching the Dropbox platform and DBX. I recently left Dropbox about three weeks ago. Um, and though I continue to stay on as an advisor, I'm looking to figure out um, what I want to be doing in the next 10 years and which technology trends are going to impact users in our community around us and how I'd like to contribute to that in the next 10 years. Given that I'm an engineer by profession, um, the way that I like to think about things is that given a set of constraints, how do I get from point A to point B in an efficient and elegant way? But this time around, I think I can afford the luxury where I don't think of the constraints. And the way I want to think about what's going to happen next in the world is in a constraint-free universe, what can I do with my time? Um, so a couple of things that interest me, the field of genomics is something that I find extremely interesting. Um, I think the cost of analyzing or genome sequencing is going down exponentially. Um, it's going to be easier to store the data, analyze and process the data. And I think we're going to see many interesting things fall out of that. Um, so genomics is definitely one area that I'm interested in. Um, education is another area. A lot of people have done a lot of work in this space, um, but I don't think we've found exactly the right solution to move education forward or to have that step, step function improvement in education. Um, and then the third one, which is not new at all, is that um, a lot of new companies are being built around operational efficiency. So it's mostly operations and logistics and how can you get goods to consumers um, in the right way. A lot of the companies in India that we call so-called copycat companies, which I don't believe are copycat companies actually, are focused on operational efficiency. So, I mean, yes, Flipkart might be like Amazon, but what they've done in, the, in terms of like the delivery system and being able to actually deliver goods to users is phenomenal and, and is innovative in different ways. So I'm kind of interested in like what are the other paradigms that, can, that we can exploit by you know, improving operational efficiency.